Cheers! And welcome to Chicago Reacts. My name is Lauren, and today I am going back to the internet historian. I'm going to be watching very serious business. So everybody, get your game faces on. This is going to be a very serious video, I can already tell. So I'm excited to learn something new. If you want to see more stuff like this, make sure you hit that like button. And you can also subscribe to the channel or join the Discord. The description, the it is in the description box below. Meh words um you'll always be the first to know when we put out new content and we do that every day so if you want to be first that's the way to do it um also if you want to see more stuff like this make sure that you uh comment let us know because otherwise it's difficult to to figure to figure that out but again hitting that like button is one of the best ways to make sure that we do know that this is what you like so Without further ado, let us find out what very serious business the internet historian is up to today. This video is sponsored by Raid, Raid Shadow, Shadow Legends. Legends. Hmm. Business is important. Business is professional. Mm -hmm. Business is the engine in the car on the road that drives us forward to our journey. There is no I in business. Welcome to the seminar. Serious Business 101. I'm just getting like uh, Unikitty vibes from the Lego movie. Business, business, business. Numbers, 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 numbers. <laughs> like. First slide, please. It's August 6th, 2013. And we're at a conference in Nashville. Uh, I wish. I wish it was August 6, 2013, but I still knew what was going to happen. I still, if I still knew. I don't know what I would have done. I would have, like, maybe, I wouldn't have been able to change my major. But maybe I would have, like, stopped following the journalism one so hard and I would have gone more into the theater one and just finished that instead. I was double majoring at that time, so I could have and I chose to, chose to do. Yeah, but I was like, you know. I don't know, but again, simpler times. 2013, simpler times. Tennessee, Agile 2013. What's Agile? Yeah, what is Agile? Well, it's blah, 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 blah. That bit's not terribly important. What matters is that this is a very professional environment. Keynotes, panels, networking. You're fascinating to talk to. <laughs> and a quirky little idea. Interactive display boards. Five of these placed across the convention grounds, in lobbies, the cafeteria, gathering grounds. And there's a brilliant innovation to go with them. An automatic Twitter feed. Simply use the hashtag Agile2013 and your unmoderated message will appear on the board. It even displays images. What an amazing idea, you guys. And it sounds so bad. Oh no. People were loving it, giving feedback, showing their pride. It was all going great. It only takes one troll, dude. It just takes one troll. For a whole 87 minutes, when one attendee had a very unprofessional idea. He takes a photo of one of the displays and posts it to a certain message board with the following text. Hello, B. I come to you in a time of great need. Five giant screens. Ridiculous avatars, gore, and trap imagery would be much appreciated. Please, pretty please. Well, we'd better test this out. So people logged into Twitter, wrote something dumb with the hashtag Agile2013, and hit send. A minute later, a new photo comes up on the message board. Confirmation. Ho oh, ho ho. So there was everyone enjoying the conference. I honestly can't believe it took over, a, it took 87 minutes. It took over an hour for someone to just try and get that out to their friends. I guess they are pretty professional in this business world. This when suddenly, we're in this convention do I find the Zimmerman themed butt plugs. My daddy never had big man talk with me. How do I make baby? I want baby. 
and from there it escalated. There's a guy having concerning sex with a dead person in the Asia, toilet. You can find me. I will only let good you have some concerning team work. Work. My Asia, father should be accepted. They are only good for making electronics. Now it didn't take long for agile organizers to notice. Agile Alliance does not approve of the misuse of the hashtag. And here was the fatal mistake. They thought, it's only like, three trolls from Twitter, it's no problem. So they rallied their troops, telling them to fight back with the report spam function. Well, said B. If they want war, we'll give them war. <laughs> and honestly, they took it too far. They started yes. posting increasingly reprehensible stuff on the timeline, to the point where all of the other attendees were drowned out by a deluge of horrific images. Their reporting was slow and ineffective against people making alt accounts. So with each passing minute, they were losing more ground. A couple of agile attendees stuck their heads up over the trenches and drew targeted fire. Looks like the feed is being spammed pretty badly. Maybe time to switch hashtags. I can't be the only one reporting all these people. Why doesn't Twitter make them go away? Lisa is giving free toss jobs at the main screens. Flailing round of I'm blocking and blocking, but they keep coming up. Eventually, someone from B offered some useful advice. Have you tried getting the cyber police involved? How do I contact these cyber police? But tragically, the cyber police never came. Report them! I, Stop I them! cried one of the organizers. But it was no use. And soon he was targeted too, with his profile and personal pictures shopped into compromising positions. Uh. Then those shops were, of course, posted back onto the Agile hashtag. Eventually, Agile had had enough. And they surrendered. Disabling the Agile 2013 hashtag. Oh. And that was the end of it. Or was it? Because it turns out there was another functioning hashtag, Agile2. And once B figured that out, they took to destroying that as well. And that really was the end of it. Or was it? Because B found the host's website. They went straight to the source, uploading content directly to the displays. And that really, really was the end. The next day, the only thing on the displays was this message. We are working on shutting down the Eventifier site, we are reporting abusive accounts, we are also trying to find all other sources and shut them down as well. I'm sorry. And that was the tragedy that befell the Gay Lord Ops. This is why we can't have nice things. You know, people get excited about something. Just... I mean, I guess it was 2013, but still, they should have... I feel like we would have known. Like, trolling was not new. Like, it just it really wasn't. Like, you should know better. Did you not have, like, any young person on the team, like, who, was, who I came up with this idea? Who was like, yeah, it takes one person to make this all come crashing down around you. Just one. Very unprofessional, you guys. Slide two, please. But first, airtime. Shadow Man here with Raid, Raid Shadow, Shadow Legends. Raid. Available now on iOS and Android, it's a totally free RPG PvP DVD for people with ADHD, but don't take my word for it, here's someone from IGN. <laughs> uh, we Look how many positive reviews it has. In fact, I bought another phone with my sponsorship money so I can dual wield raid Shadow, Shadow Leaves. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah. Dozens of upgradable characters, fleshed out storyline. Wait, I just realized this is my one opportunity to say bad stuff about Shroud. I've watched almost every one of his videos. He'll never hear it because he always skips my fucking ads. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Red Shady Shadow Lemons. Legends. But don't take my word for it. Here's someone from Qualcomm. Mom, I've been playing for two days straight, and there's nothing you can do to stop me. Hey, wait, no, no, stop. Mom, <laughs> look at this one. I use this champion because she has a massive co Are you playing a fucking console? Throw that in the trash, my dude. That's my dialysis machine. Your phone is the only dialysis machine you need. Giant boss fights, PvP battles, almost 10 million players. Are you playing yet? Get it with the code in the description and get 50k silver and a free epic champion. 
What a twist. There's also big plans to update the game. Here's a roadmap for the next six months. All right, Brain get the game. Shadow. I've been Shadow Man. Thank you. Not going to lie, uh, the more I see <laughs> of the Internet Historians like ads for Rage Shadow Legends, the more I kind of want to play it. So, I mean, it's working. I just haven't done it. Right, where was I? McDonald's is a business. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. It's all mine. In January of 2012, they had a brilliant idea. Let us improve brand perception with Twitter. Let us appeal. Oh my god. Oh no. Okay, this whole thing is going to be about how Twitter ruins everything, isn't it? <laughs> but you know, apropos, especially right now. Good job, Twitter. You're doing fire. To the common man with hashtag meet the farmers. A campaign that informs them that our meat only comes from local, independent producers. And not from, as the papers report, orphanages. So they published this promo. And I don't think I've ever gone to work a day in my life. <laughs> and... Success! Hell yeah lads, another win as usual. People were loving it. They had their usual detractors, of course, but overall, Good stuff. So they swapped out this hashtag with a new one. McDee's Stories. Oh no. And here's where things took a turn. They wanted the Twitter public to tell their experiences at McDonald's. <laughs> Obviously only good things ever happen at McDonald's. This is going to be a slam dunk. Let us shake hands in confidence at our imminent success. So McDee's Stories premiered on the Twitter homepage and... Uh -oh. Within five minutes, it was clear that people weren't going to harp on about the time they got a free extra sauce with their McNuggets. Instead, they were going to tell McHorror stories. Here's just a select few. Story. A McFingernail in my fries. A woman McSoliciting McSex in the drive through lane. I looked this one up, by the way, it's true. My friend claims- I feel like the thing with, with this is that I would believe almost all of them i think you would have to, i would be hard pressed not to believe a horror story from mcdonald's like i mean personally i don't think i ever had like a really terrible terrible experience at mcdonald's but like it's a fast food chain and you know the clown is spooky like the the worst experience i ever had at any fast food joint was at an arby's um and i was young and like we went in uh because we we're gonna grab food and I think that and I was gonna go into the bathroom and I opened the door into the bathroom and it was just like a concrete cell in there and there were no less than three giant spider webs like complete with spider and so I <laughs> closed the door and I went to my mom and I was like I'm not doing it <laughs> I'm gonna be outside um and just, I, I'll hold it until whenever we get to wherever we're going. I'm not eating from here. And I, like, left. I was, like, nine. I was, like, no. Mm -mm. And, uh, yeah, I've never been back to an Arby's. Um, but, yeah, that was, I was, like, I was, like, no, nah, no. Nah. But, again, I would just, uh, the thing, the point is, you wouldn't have to stretch very far to ha have a bad McDonald's story. The Ronald McDonald exposed himself to her as a child. Awful. McRats in the buns. Oh yikes, this one's real too. Go back there in the bun area. You're gonna find at least three racks stop. that got droppers on them. Oh God, make it stop. Someone stop it now. But it was gaining traction. More and more people were publishing their negative stories on the hashtag. And once they had used all those up, it progressed to just Making up stuff for shock value. Story. I ate McDonald's as a kid, and I'm pretty sure that's why my father left. Closed eyes, sad face. I once saw... <laughs> I can't say that. <laughs> but that'll make anyone grimace. Thank you, thank you. Within two hours, they pulled down the advertising campaign yep. and... Yep. It... See, that makes sense. Within two hours. Like, it t would take no time at all. And instead, put up a far more innocuous little things hashtag they had a few minor trolls there too but it quickly faded into obscurity the media jumped on the story case studies were written and lessons were learned about not giving the public an in yeah don't 
Or were they? Oh no. <laughs> He's already dead. July 1st, 2016. Create your own custom burger on this McDonald's website. Bun, meat patty, semen. Name your creation. Have it published on the website. Then vote on the best one and it will become an official item on the menu. You knew where this was going to go. I knew where this was going to go. How did McDonald's not? <clears throat> A poem, if you will. The sad European. A thin privilege to go. Bag of lettuce, no tissues. Mein Kampf, just so. The atheist delight, with a side of fries. The toddler body bag, with double ketchup surprise. Pepe the sandwich, a rectal prolapse half-baked. Pound my behind daddy, comes with a shake. Girth. <laughs> the Aryan, a vision of Christ. A whole pineapple with your meal for ten times the price. A tip for my lady, this one's gluten-free. It's still not too late to vote for Bernie. Whopper, no onions. Anatomical sandwich. Just, just grow up, you guys. Or don't. Now, if you'll excuse me, very funny. I have to shower off Ron's creamy surprise. See, this, this is you, you fucking clown. I mean, yeah. Naturally, like the it. press seized on it as much as the general public did, laughing at all the dumb sandwiches while also condemning them. Guys, come on, guys, this isn't funny, come on. The website was shut down and not much remains. Except for these. And also this text document I found, which has a bunch of other sandwich names. What ingredients were involved and what they look like, though, you'll have to use your imagination. Or I could Next slide, please. Prophylactics, a serious business. Let us shake hands in both a fun and safe oh, manner. Oh, I see this one is ribbed for my pleasure. Early 2013, Jurex launches a revolutionary new app. SOS condoms. Download, select the product, enter your location, and a condom will be delivered to you within an hour. Oh, perfect timing. Their emphasis was on discretion and anonymity when delivering the goods, and the delivery drivers were in disguise. Pizza delivery guy, police officer. I'm not sure that's legal. A gimmick to be sure. And some people thought it was an out of season April Fool's joke. But people tried it out and it really worked. So they rolled the service out over the tip of Dubai, of all places. But after its first week, the government shut it down, citing it as promoting promiscuity. Booted out, they had a tough time deciding where to launch next. Guys, guys, let's let the audience decide with another online poll. Oh, no. oh, for fuck's sake. So people jumped on the website and started voting. I will be voting for a Krispy Kreme donut place. Tens of thousands of votes were counted, with some of the major contenders being Paris, Singapore, Kuala Lumpur and London. From South Africa to move away from this. But all of them were outshined, with the most votes counted for Batman. A small conservative Muslim city in Turkey. Let that be an object less than... Oh, uh, yes. I do know that Batman is a real place. I always forget. <laughs> Excellent. Well done. And the dangers of tampering with the laws of Mother Nature. The internet rejoiced. Another marketing campaign to add to the KD ratio. A Facebook post went out from SOS Condoms congratulating Batman and to stay tuned for more to come. But there was no more to come, so to speak. They didn't even get it? The campaign was promptly stopped. SOS condoms never opened in Batman. SOS condoms never opened anywhere ever again. Ew. They went silent for months. Everyone moved on. SOS condoms deleted their account. And slipped forever away into obscurity. Pizza. I want to know why they didn't go. That's what I want to know. They, Batman voted for them. Batman should receive its condoms. That is serious business. DiGiorno does frozen pizza and they have a substantial social media presence. Domestic violence is bad. Bold statements only on this channel. Well, Twitter had a hashtag for National Domestic Violence Awareness Day. People were sharing their harrowing stories with the hashtag, why I stayed. These were all quite serious and dealt with some delicate and sensitive issues. Then here comes DiGiorno, throwing on the accelerator, no fucks given, driving right through the front door. They had pizza. Ooh. Hehe, <laughs> that was a great tweet.
I bet everyone is loving it. Oh. Her eyes scream for pain and when we'll scream in pain, she asks for help. Precisely 0.1 seconds after they posted it, they must have realized it wasn't the wisest move. And they apologized, but the media got involved. So they kept apologizing. I'm sorry. They couldn't I'm sorry. stop I'm apologizing. Sorry. I'm sorry. They just I promise you never again. Kept I'm so sorry. At it was terrible. They I couldn't be more sorry. But please accept my deepest do apologies. Relax. I am sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Naming your baby is serious business. Put it to the internet, this Canadian couple said. Trust in the kindness and sensibility of strangers. It was Cthulhu Allspark. Next. That's awesome. Do you know what kerning is? Yes. It's important in print. It's essential. Oh, wait, wait. Okay. There's the lead and the kern. One of them is the spaces between the letters. One of them is the spaces between the lines. I think kerning is between the letters. The proportional spacing between fonts. Why does it matter? Well, sometimes two letters close to each other can look like a single letter, oh, for God's sake. All right, stop. Let me finish up with a little bit of a behind the meme style history lesson. In the early 2010s, brands were only just finding their foothold in social media. They didn't quite understand how to connect with their audience. The tendency was to be a bit overly formal, stuffy, not quite fun. That is until Denny's came along with a oh, game changer. My God, I remember the Denny's Twitter and like they they got a Tumblr and like oh my God, I remember this. I remember Denny's and we were just like, everyone loved the Denny's social media manager. Like whoever it was, I just remember everyone being like, oh my God, the Denny's is on point. <laughs> like there was they would just like, they could get real savage. Like, they were weird. I remember that. I remember people getting, like, kind of into Denny's social media for a while. In Tumblr account. They started actually having a good time. Yeah. And it appealed to fellow Zoomers, such as myself. It took a little while, but soon other brands cottoned on to the strategy. Arby's started posting memes. Wendy's dropped a mixtape. And then went into a WWE-style feud back and forth with Burger King and McDonald's. And Gen Zers, such as myself, lapped it up. How do you do, fellow kids? Now, that's not to say they all figured it out. Other brands attempted it too, but without committing fully, they failed to get the same appeal. So, into the late 20 teens, things were going pretty great. It was a little content renaissance. Chick fil A is officially America's favorite fast food restaurant. Imagine if we opened on Sundays, had to give everyone else, like Wendy's, a chance to make money. Your mom is a hoe. Stakeums even broke down the whole phenomenon on Twitter and in articles. And I'd like to turn that into a full video soon. But, with all these relatable memes floating around, people were starting to feel a little pandered to. Yep. <laughs> Very relatable. Yeah. Nice, that's, that's relatable. Yeah. Yep, relatable. Yeah. Hmm. Relatable. Yeah. Okay. Everything's getting so fucking relatable, it's actually kind of annoying. I remember that. Guys, movie. we get it. You're relatable. I just... It just stopped. Yeah, it, it was it was fun for a little bit, and then we cottoned on to what they were doing, essentially. Um, and it's like, we it's like, yep, okay, great, good job, brand. There's like, there's like a meme, I think, that like, it's like, says, be gone, brand, or something like that. Stop relating. Stop. Stop. Enough. That's it. I can't take it anymore. All right. Silence brand. Silence brand. That was it. Silence brand. That was it. And so a new meme was born. I remember. The yes. spider crab with laser eyes, aerial font 32 point, white on black bar background, no shadow text. Silence, comma, brand. I remember that. Now. And it was a very powerful tool. Eminem's pushing something or rather. Take that brand. <laughs> Hey, fellow Gen Zers, silence, Brad. <laughs> and it became a long and enduring meme. OMG, I feel that. That is such a mood. Relatable AF. Silence. Sometimes a few brands could crack through it. Silence, Twitter. But for the most part, this crab has become the quality control of Twitter. An apex predator shutting down lesser brands. God bless it. Alright.
right, it's time to stop. That's enough business for today. <laughs> Thank you for attending my seminar. Here are the patrons. Thank you very much. I love Mwah. Mwah. See you at movie night. Mwah. <laughs> also, uh, I have other videos on the second channel. Sonic cried a little, and Tails put his hand under his face to catch the tears. The chef should have dipped some on his finger and then insisted that the host. <laughs> <laughs> and also, Shadow Raid Legions on the Nintendo GameCube. It's actually really fun to play while you're watching telly and doing stuff. Use the link. Okay. Yeah. So, some of that I had never heard of. Some of it, I'm distressed that it never actually came to be. I think it would have been very funny if Batman got its condoms. Um, I mean, I wonder if people... And I still wonder why that didn't happen. I think that's a little bit of a bummer. Um, but it's like, you know, I do remember the brand wars. Like, all of that. Like, on Tumblr. And we saw... We got a lot... I wasn't on Twitter at the time. I was on Tumblr. That was... Uh, college years for me so it's like i was all we like i was all up on tumblr we got a lot of uh screenshots from twitter and we saw a lot of twitter screenshots that were from tumblr you know it was the whole thing but like i do remember i do remember the like in the silence brand you still see that sometimes um like that that has actually stuck around uh because they're still trying to do it if it's like we as a society have moved on from that for the most part we're just like we we're, we're done with that part you did it was fun for a minute and then yeah you're still a major corporation and you don't know what you're talking about but yeah that was fun thank you very much for watching with me if you want to see more stuff like this uh just let me know in the comments below or leaving a like or both both is good if you want to push our algorithm also it would really really help our channel if you would subscribe we were trying to get to 100k um that would just absolutely that would be that would be peak <laughs> that is what we're that is what we're aiming for um it would be a huge help if you could just you know just hit that button and then you'll always know when we put out new content. And again, the Discord link is in the description box below. You can also join the community there. They're full of very cool people. Um, and then if you uh, are feeling so inclined um, and you want to get a couple of extra bonus perks, you can also join our Patreon. Um, we really couldn't do this without y'all, so we'd appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you in the next video. Cheers! Thank <laughs> you.